Cataracts are a condition that develops slowly over the course of a lifetime. And so sometimes figuring out that long gray line of when you've moved from having a lens that's not quite as good as it could be to a lens that is now a full-on cloudy cataract, it's hard to know when you officially cross over. So what I want to do is talk through with you a couple of the symptoms of a cataract. And as I like to do, uh, both in personal life and when talking about cataracts, we will make a list. So number one on the list is the difficulty with glare. So if we look at an eye, and I'm going to draw one right here. This is a globe of an eyeball. If we were looking out from the side this way, this would be the dome of the cornea, clear cornea on the front which, by the way, stays clear, never gets cloudy over time. And then behind that, you've got this iris here, and this is uh, where the ring of your iris is what makes your pupil right there in the middle. This one's a bit off-center. That's called correctopia, uh, and, uh, but it's not normal. And then uh, this is the lens behind that. So this lens right here is what becomes a cataract over time. And, and the reason for it is these layers of the lens are getting more compact over time. There's these little lens fibers that are constantly growing and making new lens, but the lens that's on the inside here in the middle, the nucleus of the lens, doesn't have anywhere to go. So it gets more and more compact over time, and that causes problems for two reasons. One, this lens should be nice and flexible and be able to move from a rounded position to a flat position in the blink of an eye, which is what it does thanklessly for the first couple of decades of our life. But we don't know how good that was until it's gone. The other reason it's a problem that it's getting more and more compact is because as you're trying to get light in, whether you're looking at a book or cars down the road, the light from that source has to come through the front of your eye, through this pupil, and make it through the lens to the back of the eye. And as there's more layers that are more dense, it filters the light in an unhelpful way. Those layers are not laid down perfectly neatly aligned so that light can travel through without having any sort of stops on the way or getting diffracted or bent in any way as it goes through. So, fast forward from age 8 when your lens is perfect to age 58 when it's getting worse and worse, and then age 68, and it's different for everybody because the age of the cataract inside your eye, your lens ages uh, at a different rate, or at least not necessarily the same rate as the date of birth that you have on your driver's license. There are people who are 70 who have phenomenally clear lenses, and there are people who are 50 who have lenses that uh, are really, really bad cataracts. And so the way uh, that it changes over time, you'll notice first and foremost glare. And the reason for that is, as light's coming in from a car headlight or something, it's hitting the dense fibers inside your lens and it's getting sprayed everywhere. So what you want is for this, uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a good drawer here. This is my drawing of a car. There we go. It's got, it's got headlights or it's honking. This is supposed to be headlights shining. And so as the light comes in, I'm actually gonna move this pupil because I can't stand it anymore. There we go. As the light comes in from that, what we want is for it to come in and come right through the front of the eye into a clear picture on the back of the eye. What happens as these lens fibers get more and more and more dense over time is that same light comes in and sprays out in different directions. And so same cars on the road, same nighttime driving conditions, but those point sources of light are now a source of tremendous diffraction because the light coming in is spraying everywhere. And so you'll have a lot of people that their first symptom of a cataract, they'll say, I see fine, I don't even need glasses, but at night I have trouble driving because there's just glare on the road. That is uh, the first and foremost. It's the most famous of the symptoms. The second is decreased low light vision. And so here's why that's different than glare. Glare is the light that's coming into your eye is getting sprayed in a way where you, where you have distracting halos and starbursts, uh, but it's still making it through and just the extra light is spraying off. And it usually comes from point sources of light. 
But most people, if they've gotten to the point where they have glare, and sometimes even before they have glare, will have this difficulty with low light vision. And that is not necessarily with point sources of light, but with light that you're having to see that is shined off of a page on a book. And that's because the amount of light that you need to push into the back of your eye has to get higher and higher and higher. So if you're a little kid, uh, you can read a book uh, with all the lights in the room off. As long as there's just a light somewhere on in a hallway nearby, you can see fine because every bit of light that's touching that page is making it through your lens to the retina unobstructed, nearly 100% of the light. But as that slowly gets muted over time, as the volume knob on how much light can make it through your lens gets turned down from a 10 to a 9 to an 8, you need increasing amounts of light in order to see the same things. And so the second symptom of a cataract is, I can still see stuff, but I have to really, really increase the light. True story, the way that I knew it was time for my mom to have her lens replacement surgery, uh, which is a type of cataract surgery, was I used her phone and it just nearly blinded me because the brightness was so incredibly high and it let me realize she was having to use enormous amounts of light just to do normal tasks on her phone. And so we placed a new lens and she's great now. And now I can use her phone without hurting my own eyes. The last of the symptoms, and this is the biggest of them, no longer able. And that's shorthand for saying that you're, you're no longer able to do things as well as you want to do them or as often as you want to do them because of your vision. And that means that even if you have a good pair of glasses, there's still things that are in, you're impaired, you're unable to do them like you could before. And it has to do with the vision that you've got. And so this right here is, is kind of the sine qua non of cataracts where if you have this, uh, it means it's time for you to have the surgery whenever you want to. Never an emergency that you have to do it, but once someone's ready to do it because they have these symptoms, that means that it's the right time to do it. So hopefully this list of symptoms is helpful in letting you know if you've just been dealing with cataracts for a long time without ever realizing that that's a problem or that it's not normal or that you don't have to do that anymore.